Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photography show on Facebook. Photo Joseph, no, facebook.com slash photo Joseph URLs. Who knows? So uh, ooh, let's mute that. That'd be bad. So uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope you had a fabulous weekend. I went and played in the snow because we have snow here. And while I was up in the snow, I shot some snow pictures with my iPhone 7 Plus and I wanted to share the whole raw editing experience. We've been talking about shooting and editing raw with the iPhone a little bit, and I thought we would uh, have a little fun with that, get into a couple of pictures that I shot. Just look at one picture that I shot with Lightroom Mobile. And one of the disadvantages, and we've, we've talked about this before, one of the disadvantages of Lightroom Mobile, shooting raw in Lightroom Mobile, is that you can then only edit the raw file in Lightroom Mobile. You can't export the raw file to the camera roll so that you can access it in something else like Snapseed, which is a bit of a drag, which is one of the reasons that I like using other apps like uh, like RAW from by 500px, because then that allows us to just save the RAW file, the native RAW file to the camera roll, and then access it in whatever you want. And I'm sure you can import that into Lightroom. I've actually never tried that, but I'm sure you can. But uh, let's just say, and as I did here, that we shot the picture in Lightroom Mobile. So now it's kind of trapped there. So we're going to take a look at what we can do in Lightroom Mobile. And then we're also going to look at it in another app because what I've already done is on the desktop, once Lightroom Mobile had synced over to the desktop, is I imported that picture into Photos. So it has synced back to the camera roll. So I have it in two places. Sadly, to date, you have to use your desktop computer to do this. You can't do that on your iPad or iPhone, which is really dumb, frankly, but that's the way it is now. So we've got to work with what we've got. So um, with that said, let's take a look at the image first inside of Lightroom, see what we can do with it. And then just because I think it's kind of interesting to compare what we can do in other apps, we'll take that same image and open up in Snapseed, which is maybe my favorite raw editor. I don't know. I mean, Snapseed rocks. We all know Snapseed has always been awesome. And uh, so we'll see what we can do with it in there. And I don't know if we'll be able to get any more out of it or not. I actually haven't done much of anything with this picture other than open it and look at it in Lightroom and go, yep, it's there. But uh, we'll see what we can do. Now, I shot it on the iPhone. I did shoot it with the longer lens. As you're going to see, it's a big wide vista. We shot with the 50 mil lens or whatever it is, the telephoto lens that's in this camera. And it has synced over to my iPad. So we're going to edit it in the iPad because it's more fun there to have the, the, bigger, um, the bigger screen. And I think that's it. So let's jump over and take a little look. So this is Lightroom Mobile. And uh, the pictures up in the top left here, you can see it's these four right here. So we'll just grab that one there. And on first open, it's showing up quite dark. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to back up and grab this one, which is more how I was seeing it on the phone. You know, you remember something else we've talked about too. You remember that when, when you shoot raw in Lightroom and then you're looking at the image in Lightroom, the image that you're seeing is not native. I mean, not sorry, not, not native. It's not untouched. Lightroom does a basic automatic pass on it and gives you a representation of that. And it looks really good. Um, and it looks like we might be having some live issues. And if we are, sorry. Um, so as soon as you start to edit the picture, you touch any slider, it boom, goes back to a very dark or bright or whatever, kind of an untouched image. And then you have to do everything manually. So with that said, uh, let's, uh, oh, look, my whole Safari thing just crashed. God, I hate that thing. Um, let's take a look at what we've got. So let's go back to this. And in the meantime, I'm going to try and fix my computer screen the heck's going on here. Anybody out there watching live, of course, as always, do say hello. Shout out in the comments. Always lovely to hear from you guys. Okay, so this is the image as I first saw it off of my iPhone. This one, I guess, must be the one that I very marginally touched. I wanted to edit and then went, oh yeah, right. It does that whole thing where it reverts it. So this is more the native image. This is what I saw when I first started editing it. So if I open this guy up in here, let's go ahead and uh, let's not go to presets. Let's go to edit. And uh, let's go to exposure. And I think as soon as I touch something in here, so you can see the exposure is already up a little bit. Let's see what happens in here. Well, now that's interesting, isn't it? This is definitely a different experience on the iPad than it is on the iPhone. Well, that's kind of lame. All right, you know what? Let's, let's take a look at it on the iPhone because that's where I shot it. So let's take a look at it on here. Let me get Lightroom up and running and wait for that. And we'll switch over. There we go. Okay, so here, same images. So we see them across the top there. There's the same four. I'm going to open up this one, which is the adjusted, automatically adjusted one. 
And let's go into the light adjustments. I'm going to open the curves. Oh, no, this one's, oops, see, that one's already been, all right, this was the one, okay, now I know why. Yeah. This is the one that I had played with, and then I hit the auto adjust. So I can tell that because, let me back out of that again. Oops, wrong button. If you look on here, you can see the sliders, exposure, contrast, and highlights. Those are all actually adjusted. That's because I tapped the auto button on here. Okay, so now let's look at the previous one that's dark. I must have messed with it as well. Let's go to this one. Hmm. Interesting. So the reason I'm saying, hmm, interesting, is that when I looked at these yesterday when I shot them, they looked different. They looked more like this one here, like they had been adjusted. But as soon as I went to tap to adjust anything, it reverted back to the default. When I look at this image here, notice how the sliders are all in their zero position, but they're actually lit up. And when I first shot it, they were not. You know what, let's just, let's just do this. Let me go and take a picture. And let's fire up the camera. Come on, camera, there we go. And we'll just take a, make sure it's in RAW, it's in DNG. Yes, we're good. Um, let's get off the telephoto lens. There we go. Take a picture. Okay. Now, let's close the camera. Oh, you know what? Let me turn on my little um, finger taps on this. There we go. Show touches. Open that up. So that's how the image looks. Open the light editor. Apparently, I'm lying to you. I don't know. All those adjustments are there. It's so crazy. Obviously, this is not a super high dynamic, crazy hard to expose for image. But uh, if I as soon as, let's see what happens as soon as I tap a, a slider to adjust it, see, it did change dramatically, didn't it? It really did change. Okay, well, let's just go back to this other one and let's see what happens. Let's go into here, wait for that to load, wait for that to load, wait for that to load. Hmm. Well, this is good television. There we go. And now I'm going to grab the exposure slider and just touch it a tiny bit and let's see if the image changes dramatically. It does not. Who the heck knows? All right, Lightroom, you're confusing the hell out of me. Whatever. Let's tap the auto button. Auto looks pretty good. And obviously from there, we can open up things like the curves and do more dramatic adjustments in here. So, but what I want to focus on in this particular image is the sky, the highlights in the skies. So let's take it back to the iPad because it's bigger. It's more fun to look at it that way. And it'll just be bigger on the screen. And wait for that to sync up. And there we go. iOS only. All right. So let's look at the highlights. So let's go into the highlights. You can see the highlights are already way, way down. Uh, what I want to see is if I can pull in more detail out of the sky. With the highlight, full on highlight recovery. I mean, that's actually pretty good. Should we re reset this thing? Let's reset this thing. Let's go to, where's that? Go to, not selective, go to edit and reset on the right. And we're going to go reset all. There we go. So there's our basic starting point. And let's just see from this what I can do. So let's start with, now you can really see how high contrast this is. The shadows are very dark, the highlights are very bright. So let's go to the uh, basic exposure. Let's just start with that, which obviously is not going to work. But let's take the exposure up in the foreground. So you can see there's quite a lot of detail in there. It's looking pretty good. And we'll take it down to pull in the clouds. So we really do have quite a dynamic range in there of, uh, of data that's captured by the iPhone. Now, one of the things that we've seen before when playing with the iPhone pictures, <clears throat> pardon me, is in low light, they're incredibly noisy. And you're going to be applying some level of noise reduction, which will be applied automatically if you haven't reset anything. Um, but the low light images, the high so images are really, really noisy. This was broad daylight. And actually, let's see here what ISO this was shot at. Um, it's not telling me on the info there. I know it's going to tell me on here. We figured that out last time doing the two finger tap, brought that up. ISO 20. Okay. So <laughs> that's low ISO. So if there's going to be any grain, it shouldn't, or noise, it should not be showing up in this picture, which is great because we have to really pull some detail out of the shadows in there. So let's go back to this screen and see what we've got. So I've, I have to make a decision. Am I going to bring up the shadows by using the exposure and then bring down the highlights using other tools? Or am I going to bring down the highlights using exposure and bring up the shadows using other tools? So let's, well, let's start with this. Let's try this since we're here. So sky, yeah, it's okay, right about there. That's looking pretty good. And then let's go to shadows, bring up shadows, and let's see what happens. That's not bad. Not bad on the shadows. Um, not enough. So I think what we'll do, let's reset that. Um, double tap on that to reset it. I'm going to go to selective. 
I'm going to do a linear gradient and let's do a gradient up like so. And now take up the exposure because we know that that worked quite well before. Taking the exposure up, let's make that a little bit bigger. So we don't want to get too high on there. Obviously, we get too high, we're going to get into the clouds, but we got to get high enough up so we don't see the line. It's looking pretty good. I might do a little bit more work on this tree here. That's actually working pretty well. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add another gradient, actually. Um, let's see here. Let's, can I do another one? No, how do I do that? Um, get out of here. How do I do that? There we go. Add another one. Add another one. Let's pull down from the sky and do a little bit more exposure down in the sky. Not too much. We don't want it to look all dark and dreary. So maybe it's, maybe I don't want to do exposure. Maybe I just want to do highlights. Let's do highlights. Bring that down. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Okay, let's do a radial gradient over this tree here. Let's rotate that, put that into position, and bring up the exposure just a little bit on that. Not too much. See, we go too much. Yucca. Bring up just a little bit on there. I'm actually going to kind of cheat it up towards the top because it's really the top of the tree that needs it more. Bring the exposure up a little bit more on there. Not too bad. Not too bad. Now we got this tree on the right that clearly at this point we've got this whole area in here still very shadowed because of course we haven't been bringing up the exposure there. So we could do, let's see, what do we want to do? I could do a radial gradient in there or I could do another linear. If I do a linear one across, we're going to be competing with the work we've already done down here. So let's not do that. Let's delete that one. Let's do a radial gradient, tap radial. We're going to put this radial gradient right about so. And I'm not going to be able to do exposure because that'll mess with the sky, but we can bring up the shadows on that. Let's see here. Probably not too much because it's it's pretty dark to begin with. This was definitely on the shadow side of things. That brings it up a little bit. I'm going to bring the shadows a little bit more. I don't know. Oh, well, there we go. There we get some of that nice detail back in there. Okay, I'll take that. So, let's see. Um, where's my... Let's get out of here. Out of the selective. And... Where's my before and after? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's a before and after in there somewhere, isn't there? One of these days I'm going to have to actually get used to this app. Well, anyway, we can see. I mean, that is dramatic. If we look at... Here, let's do this. Let's go to the image here. There's, let's do a full reset on this one, and we'll use that as our before, because these pictures are virtually identical to each other. Reset all. Okay, so that, oops, ha, don't do that. That to that. Not too shabby for an iPhone picture, you know? Let's add a little more contrast into here. It's looking a little bit on the flat side. Just a little bit of contrast, and let's bring some color back into this as well. Where is saturation? Bring up some saturation. Nice. Not uh, too much. Okay. Well, that's not too shabby. So there's a low ISO, so we're not having to deal with that crazy high noise issue that we had in the other picture that we looked at a week or two ago or something. It was the picture with the barn. I don't know. Maybe it was Friday. We'll we'll figure it out, put a link to it. Um, this is definitely a better result than that because this is, again, it's a much lower ISO. It's looking pretty good in Lightroom. I'm, I'm digging what this picture does. So now let's take a look at the same picture in... Snapseed. Remember, as I said, I had to to get this raw image into Snapseed. That means I had to be on the desktop. Couldn't do this on the mobile. Pulled it out of Lightroom after it synced through. Lightroom Mobile synced back to Lightroom on my desktop. Pulled out the DNG file and copied that into the Photos app, which has now synced across to yonder iOS devices. So with that said, let's go ahead and find that guy. Open up Photos. There's the picture. Oh, and you know, let's just, just to prove the point, um, Let's go back to this real quick and choose a different picture here. And in fact, just to really make it clear, I'm going to grab this one. So this is the one, obviously, we just shot a few moments ago in here. And I don't know why it takes so long to load sometimes. There we go. Let's go to edit mode, and we're going to reset this to all. Just make sure it's fully reset. Now, if I want to save this, top right, I tap on the share, save to camera roll. And you'll see that my options are small and max available, but not original, not raw. So if I choose max available, you, you might think, oh, well, that'll shave out the DNG, right? That'll save the raw file, but it won't. So we're just going to prove that very quickly here, just in case you were thinking that it might do that. And by the way, under the 
options in there, the gear menu, there's nothing like, you know, save out rods, basically just for metadata, save your location, save your copyright, something, whatever. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back now. And we'll look at photos and there's the picture. So we open this guy up. Oh, I don't know if I even have a metadata viewer. I do, here we go. So we'll look at Metafo. And you can see right there, right in the center of the screen, it is a JPEG file. So just again, proving that point, that's the JPEG file. Now to the left of that, this one here, this is the raw file. So let's do the same thing. Let's look at that in Metafo. And now you can see it's raw. So raw image 432 by 3024. This is the raw file that was shot with the, um, with the iPhone. You can see that on the bottom as well. Apple iPhone 7 Plus, you can see where it was. All that good metadata is there. And we have copied that into photos on the desktop. Okay, so now let's play with this image in Snapseed. So open up Snapseed, the last photo that I worked on in here. And, oh, not camera. Yeah, yes, wrong button, cancel, open again. Where is that picture? See, I, I don't know why, it, I guess it goes to where your last one was. That's crazy. Open from device, let's go to the regular browser. And there's the picture. All righty. So let's see what we can do in here. And we know that we're in raw because, because, wait, wait a minute. This isn't good. Where's the raw adjustment? There should be a raw tool at the top. Son of a, where's the raw? Dang it, you know, it just like, clearly today's show was well rehearsed. I never rehearsed these things. You should know that by now. Let me take a look at it on the phone because I don't know where the raw tools are. That is definitely not cool. Looking at the picture again here, let's go ahead and share this. And let's get this guy up so you can follow along on my madness. Come on, show up, show up, show up. There it is. Um, okay, there it is. We look at this picture. Oh, I don't, do you see if I do this? Yeah, you do see that. Okay, Metafo, we are looking at the, oh, now it's downloading it. iCloud PhotoSync is still not my friend. <laughs> Okay, so raw image, we're seeing it's a raw image. Excellent, that's there. Okay, so now let's go to Snapseed and open that picture in Snapseed. And if I'm seeing the raw one here and not here, that's gonna be crazy weird, crazy weird. Let me keep playing with this while I'm waiting for this guy to load over here. Damn yeah, it, it's just, it's not there. I got the white balance tools, but that's not raw, okay. Open, open from device. Let's find that picture. There it is. And well, crap. Okay, so this is educational. Basically, I completely didn't expect this. I guess what we're seeing here is that we can't take a raw image from Lightroom into into another app. That's so bizarre. So for some reason. It is opening, it must be opening the embedded JPEG. Let me see if I can get the size uh, because the, you do get to see that settings and details. I think it's there. Yep, look at that. Details, unsaved image, 2048 by 1536. That is not the full resolution. It shows it's a JPEG image. How is that even possible? So Snapseed is not opening the full resolution raw image that was copied over. Well, that's... That's super lame. That's what that is. Okay, well, today's demo is not quite what I expected it to be, but we definitely learned something. So shooting in Lightroom is a totally viable way to shoot as long as you want to edit in Lightroom. If you want to edit in something else, don't shoot in Lightroom because apparently you can't even bring the files back in. Just to, let's kind of prove this point too, I'll open up the RAW camera app. This is RAW by 500px. And let's just do a quick picture here. I'm gonna do something else. Let's do this keyboard here. So there's the picture it's taken and swipe over. Uh, oh, that would not be where they are. Swipe this way. There it is. You know, here, let's do this. I shot these as well yesterday in this app. So there's a really high contrast image. And this one, this is shot raw. So we're going to export that original to the camera roll. You have editing tools inside of RAW by 500px. I'm, they're okay, they're pretty good, um, but I like Snapseed better. So, all right, it, I saved it, apparently, I think. Let's see, did I save it? Didn't see any confirmation dialogue. And, yep, there it is. Okay, so now we're looking at the image from RAW by 500px, shot RAW by 500px, untouched, saved original to the camera roll, which you can do in RAW by 500px, you cannot do in Lightroom. And let's take a quick look at this. 
Metaphil on this and raw image. Okay, so this is one of those interesting things. So it shows it's a raw image, but it says the resolution is 852 by 640. That is the embedded JPEG. That's what it's reading. And we have learned that if I open this in the Photos app right now and try to edit it, all I'm going to get is that tiny, tiny JPEG. However, if I open this photo into a app like Snapseed, it will show us the raw, actual raw file. At least <laughs> it has in the past. Let's see if anything's changed. All right. Um, Moment of truth here. Snapseed, open. Uh, where are we? Open, it's not even seeing it. Open from device. That was weird. Not in moments, but it's showing in all photos. All right, good enough. Fingers crossed. There's the image. Yeah, see now I know we're in the raw editor because I see the white balance on the bottom right away. And, oh look, the interface has changed a little bit. There's an exposure that's nice. The exposure uh, indicator at the top, that is new. So we know we're in raw file because, again, you see the white balance on the bottom. But if I just tap out of this and go back into the editor, you'll see you have the develop module at the top. That's that's the raw develop module. So we can go back into there. And now I can do exposure adjustments to the raw file. Now, what's a big difference here? You know, I gotta, I'd say I gotta talk to the folks at Snapseed, but that means talking to folks at Google. I don't know if I can actually have a conversation with anybody there. But right now, okay, well, we're in the raw decoder, right? And so clearly you can see a massive exposure range in there from, okay, we're not, I mean, the sun itself is not, there's no detail in there, but you know, come on, it's the sun. But look at the clouds, lots of detail up there, uh, lots of detail in the snow. When I tap okay here, let's say that I, okay, I do this. Let's go, let's kind of bring it, there-ish. We'll do that. Hit OK. Now I want to add some highlight recovery into the sky. So let's try this. Let's go into selective range. I'm going to tap on the sky there, take the brightness down on there. See, it's just getting muddy. We're not bringing the detail back in. So we are not going back to the raw file. See, in Lightroom, you, you're on a full raw workflow, meaning that when I add my gradient adjustments, linear adjustments, and so linear gradients, radial gradients, and so on, I'm still hitting the raw file so I can pull in those highlights. Here, once I leave the raw adjustment tool, I can't. I'm now affecting a, what basically would be a JPEG. Um, I mean, maybe it's a TIFF, maybe it's a floating point TIFF even, but it is not, no, it definitely isn't because there's no data in the highlights. Wow, okay, so I guess then, that uh, what we've come down to is that the even if you do like the adjustment tools in Snapseed better, as I often do, if you've got a really high dynamic range image, you're not going to be able to do it in Snapseed. Okay. Oh, I'm on their beta, which means I can reach out. I have a way to reach out to them. I'm going to find out about this. I'm going to dig into this because this is not not cool um, for many reasons. Damn it, Snapseed just fell down the ladder a little bit. Well, Lightroom's kicking it. I guess that's kind of where you're going. I guess that has to be the recommendation that if you're going to shoot raw on your iPhone, shoot it in Lightroom. You have the most power, most control there. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. All right. That's it. I'm going to cut it there today. A uh, few folks watching live. Hello, hello. As always, wonderful to see you here. No comments, though, today. No commentary. Throw in the comments. You know I love to hear from you. Um, hey, don't forget, guys. There's a link down here on the thing, patreon.com slash photojoseph. I would really love to get your support to do this show. Um the only way this show makes any money is once it goes to YouTube and ad revenue. And last last month, I think I made enough to buy a, a six pack of beer. So, you know, it's not like I'm making a killing on the ad revenue. When I get to 5 million subscribers, that'll be a different story. But for now, I'm not. So if you love this show and you want to see this thing continue, actually, if you kind of like it, if you want to see it continue, um, even marginally like it, you know, kick down there, kick in a buck or two um, or more if you like to. That'd be great. If you want to see this show go away, then just don't. And that'll, you know, that'll just happen automatically. Uh, but uh, I can't do this forever uh, for nothing. So I'm hope I'm trying to find a way to fund this thing. And I don't want to bring in outside advertisers. That's not how I want to fund this show. So um, if you if you enjoy this, you can afford a buck a month or five or 10 or 20 or 100. Hey, kick in there, please. Uh, Diane, thank you. Comment. I like Snapseed too. Was hoping to see the work. Yeah, I was hoping to see it work too. Um, Snapseed's awesome. Snapseed is awesome. We'll do some more looking at Snapseed, I guess, another day just on its own. 
um, not taking away from the whole raw thing. But this is what I wanted to focus on today was this raw aspect of it. We'll take some, we'll take a look at it some more another day. All right, folks. So listen, I am out of town the next three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to be on my way to and then in New York for the B&H presentation. If you live in New York and you have not yet signed up for this, please do. It's on December 14th at... I have no idea what time, one, I think, something like that. Uh, at BH, I'm doing a presentation on wireless flash photography. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're using the new Pocket Wizards with the Lumix cameras. But even if you're not shooting Lumix and you just are interested in wireless flash photography, it will be a very informative seminar on that. So please do come check that out. I will not be broadcasting live tomorrow, Tuesday, because I'll be in the air during the live broadcast time. I will possibly do like a little mini, you know, hey, I'm at the airport, crappy, I don't know. I might just skip it all together. Uh, Wednesday, however, I'll be in Manhattan. I'll actually be at b &H during the time of the live broadcast, so I should be able to do it from there. Um, I hear they have internet. And Thursday, I have absolutely no idea. Thursday, I'll probably be in the, no, I'll be out shooting or shopping or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, if you don't hear from me, on a regular schedule over the next couple days. That is why. And we'll be back in on Friday, assuming I make it home. Don't get delayed by weather or anything. Um, all as normal. And Friday, we have scheduled for Friday. Uh, you may have seen before, I've done a, um, I did a little talk about, I did a little behind the scenes thing on the, uh, the calendar that I did that was the Grow Baby calendar. We talked about the photos. We have two videos on that. We talked about the photos, talked a bit about the behind the scenes on that. And I did a kind of a shoot of the calendars, like a mini product shoot that I ended up editing into a fast paced little thing. So we'll link to those. Um, that was kind of fun. So on Friday, assuming that I make it back in town, the uh, the creator of the calendar is going to come in so we can have a discussion about the development of the calendar, the photography behind it, her reasonings for wanting to have really good photography behind it, and so on. So that's scheduled for Friday, assuming that I actually make it back from New York. All right, guys, that's it. See you next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.